so again happy new year church family it is so good to be in worship service again today we praise god you see each new year people make resolutions about their lives to change old habits or patterns of living to what they perceive are better ways of life some people promise themselves they will lose weight or stop drinking or stop smoking or eat healthier or start exercising or even you know at the beginning of the year a lot of churches are fasting and praying some people decide you know i'm going to fast and make sure that i start this year right with the lord you know it is about the second week of the year right now and uh, if i may ask i can't see you but i'm going to ask how many people are still keeping their resolution or how many people have gone back already to their old habits you know usually people stay faithful for the first one week and then by the second week they're like uh, i don't know i don't know if i can do this you know the truth is it is a matter of the mind the mind is a very strong aspect of our lives. It controls our lives. The fact that the calendar year crossed from 2020 to 2021 does not mean your mindset suddenly becomes disciplined. If it was not disciplined one hour before the new year. <laughs> Old habits do not just change within the second because the clock turned 12.01 on New Year Day. Old habits are difficult to break. You know, I have a story I'd like to share with you that I read on the internet. <laughs> it's about Iwo Jima, a small island in the Pacific Ocean. And one of them, you know, on, on that island, on Iwo Jima, one of the most ferocious battles of World War II was fought. The Battle of Iwo Jima took place during World War II between the United States and Japan. It was the first major battle of World War II to take place on Japanese homeland. And this island, funny enough, is only eight square miles in size. Taking at great expense in money and lives, 18,000 Japanese and 6,800 Americans died on this island. Can you imagine that? But why? Why? strategic value was enormous it was presupposed that whoever won this island would win the war and whoever lost this island would lose the war the island of iwo jima was a strategic location because the u.s needed a place for fighter planes and bombers to land and take off when attacking Japan. For Japan, they needed to protect that island so no enemy could come close to their land. The US thought it could take this island within one week, but it fought for 36 days to take this island because the Japanese were ready to defend this island with their lives. That was how important this island was to the Japanese. Whether or not you realize it, a strategic battle is being fought in your own life. The outcome of this battle will determine the quality of your Christian life. Win this battle and your Christian walk will be filled with blessing and joy and satisfaction lose this battle and your christian walk will be filled with spiritual 
poverty, frustration, and if possible, eternal death. What is this battle in our lives, you might ask? It is the battle for your mind. You see, what happens in your mind determines the direction your spiritual life will take. The mind is a set of faculties, including cognitive aspects such as consciousness, imagination, perception, thinking, intelligence, judgment, language, and memory, as well as the non-cognitive aspects such as emotion and instinct. The mind is your computer, where you store everything you see, everything you hear, everything you feel, everything you think, and everything you do. All your senses influence your mind. Just like it is said about the computer, garbage in, garbage out. So is our mind, garbage in, garbage out. If you feed your mind with junk and filth, you will be filled with junk and filth and you will produce junk and filth. On the other hand, if you feed your mind with good things and holy things, you will be filled with good things and holy things and produce good things and holy things. The fruit of your mind, the fruit of your life will be good and it will be holy. This reminds me of an old American Cherokee Indian story that illustrates this concept. It's called The Tale of Two Wolves. And I will tell you the story. One evening, an elderly Cherokee brave told his grandson about a battle that goes on inside of people. He said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. And this evil wolf is anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, ego. The other wolf is good and it is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which wolf wins? The old Cherokee simply replied, the one that you feed. Does this story sound familiar to you? It sounds very much like Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16 to 25. Let's open our Bibles to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 25. To me, it looks like this old Chirikou man must have read the Bible. It, it just sounds like that to me. You know, so open Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 25. I read from verse 16. It says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, 
uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Amen? Amen. If you notice, you know, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21, seem to enumerate the attributes of the bad wolf in the story that we just told. And we are being told we shouldn't feed the bad wolf. Don't feed those things that are against the Holy Spirit. Verses 22 to 24 are the good attributes. These are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you look at, if you listen to the last message or, you know, if you, if you, if you, um, we hear the last message I preached just uh, before Christmas, I talked about the gift of love, the love of God, God's special gift to man wrapped up in Jesus Christ, the gift of God that passes any gift you could ever give to anybody at Christmas time. <laughs> When we receive this gift, when we receive Jesus, when we receive salvation, our lives are changed from the inside out. It starts from our spirit being touched by the Holy Spirit and being made right with God. Our sins are forgiven and we become children of God. We become new. We become born again. And if you can also recall, maybe some of you have not um, listened to the message, but some weeks back, I talked about man being made up of spirit, soul, and body. I speak about being born again in the spirit. Just like we give birth to newborn babies, we feed the babies to make sure that the baby grows up healthy and strong. So also, we have to feed our spirit when we are young Christians, when we are newborn babies in Christ Jesus, born again Christians. We've got to feed our spirit. We have to feed our spirit with the word of God by reading the Bible. I'm so excited to hear the men's uh, 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 Bible study group reading the Bible. That's exciting. You are feeding your spirit. We have to feed our spirit through prayers, through worship, through fellowship. And when we do this, our spirit continues to grow. The more our spirit grows closer to God, the more it can control our minds. And then, like the old Cherokee folktale, we can win this war. Then the flesh, we have less control of our minds and our emotions. This is when we can truly live transformed lives. In the Christian walk, it is called the period of sanctification. A period of learning to walk like Jesus walked. The period of learning to walk the way God wants us to walk as his children. You know, Romans chapter 8 from verse 5 to 9 captures this very well. Romans chapter 8 from verse 5 to 9. If you can open your Bibles, let's read it. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation because it's so right on. It says from verse 5, those who are dominated 
by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law and it never will. That is why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. Verse 9. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. Amen? Amen. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of God living in them do not belong to Him at all. And so we have been told this morning, in this new year, if you are a born again Christian, live like a born again Christian. Live as a believer. Live as a child of God. Let's let go of the old ways of life. Let's let go of the things that held us back from fully enjoying the love and the presence of God in our lives. Amen. No more of the old ways. You know, let's be realistic. We cannot do this in our own flesh. We cannot do this in our own strength. We need God's help to change our lives for the better. We need to depend on God for this new year. You know, Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 17 to 24 talks about the new man. The new man in Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 17 to 24. And I will read it. I'm reading from New King James Version. 17 says, this I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, to walk all uncleanness with greediness. You know, it's this, this, this section is talking about the old life we used to live. You know, the Bible refers to the rest of the Gentiles in Paul's days. But today we will say those who do not believe in Jesus, those who have not given their life to Jesus. It says, you know, therefore I say, therefore I testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the unbelievers walk. Mm. Let us not walk the way we used to walk before we got saved, before we gave our life to Jesus. Yeah. When our minds were darkened, when we were ignorant, we had no clue what it meant to walk with God. We had no clue what it meant to be born again Christians. We had no clue what it meant to be saved. Let's not go back there. We have let go of those things. Just like, you know, this it's a new year, it's a new day. We have let, we are saying, you know, we want to be better people this year, 2021. You know, we are letting go of the shortcomings we had in the year 2020. In this new year, 2021, we want to walk better. We want to live better lives. We want to walk closer with the Lord. And so this scripture is telling us, let's not behave like we used to behave before we knew Jesus. Let's not behave. Let's not act like people who do not know Jesus. Verse 20, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him. As the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, 
which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Amen. Amen. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. And so putting off the old man means let go of your old ways of life that did not please God. Instead, put on the new man. Put on the new nature that Jesus Christ has given you. Let the Holy Spirit control you. Let your, the, your, your spirit man that had just been recreated in Christ Jesus, that is now filled with the Holy Spirit, let that spirit control your mind so that your mind can act in line with the word of God. Amen? Amen. So those old habits, those old ways of thinking, those old ways of acting before we came to Christ, let, let, let it go. Let it go. That was the life that was controlled by the flesh. Our former way of life was controlled by the flesh. But our new way of life is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Our new way of life is controlled by God. And so let our mind be controlled by the Holy Spirit. You see, the enemy of our soul, the devil, is fighting tooth and nail to take over our minds with all kinds of things he throws at us, all kinds of distractions. I mean, you'll just be watching an innocent TV show, innocent. Next thing you see, you see a bizarre ad thrown up at you. It could be so terrible. It could be something of, that has to do with immorality or violence. And you're going, why? why are they throwing this thing into this simple, simple TV I'm watching? Or temptations to buy things you cannot even afford to buy because they are promising you a credit card with no interest or you are simply sending an email to somebody and the next thing you know is a horrible pop-up and you are wondering where did that come from or you might even be in a zoom meeting and somebody bombs your meeting swearing profanity yeah they, what is all this distractions distractions you know like there was a war over the possession of Iwo Jima. There is a war over the possession of your soul, over the possession of your mind. The Holy Spirit is trying to get your attention. The Holy Spirit is trying to make you a better person. And the devil is warring by all means, throwing all kinds of negative things at you. You have to fight this battle. But guess what? You will not fight it in your strength. Amen. You will not fight this battle in your strength. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. You might think, oh, it's just a simple, oh, just a simple ad with naked women. It's just a simple ad. But the point is your brain is a computer. It sees it, the database captures it. And before you know it, you are thinking and thinking. And you think, was it just a TV ad? No, the enemy made sure that was thrown in there to distract your attention. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood violence on TV, violence in movies. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. The enemy is throwing things in there to distract our mind, to, to win over our minds and make sure that we do not focus on the word of God. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse three to five, say, second Corinthians chapter 10, from verse three to five, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Yeah, come on. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Amen. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You know, at the battle of Iwo Jima, they were warring with bombs and guns and machete. We do not fight like that. We fight in the spirit because our enemy is not physical. Our enemy is spiritual. You cannot fight the devil with guns and machete and bomb. We cannot fight the devil like that. We fight on our knees. We fight with the word of God. We fight with the host of heaven behind us. With God Almighty as our banner. We war in the spirit. Our warfare is not physical. Our warfare is not carnal. And that is why it says, you know, is mighty in God in pulling down strongholds. Things that want to take our mind captive. Spiritual strongholds that want to capture our mind and not make us grow as Christians. The Spirit of the Lord helps us to cast down all arguments. You know, if you remember when Jesus was fasting and praying in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, he was in the Spirit. He was praying in the spirit of the Father, communion with the Father. And then what happens? The devil comes. The tempter comes with his temptation. And Jesus knew this is not a physical battle. It's a spiritual battle. And what did Jesus do? Jesus spoke the word of God. Amen. With the word of God, the devil was defeated. And the Bible says, the devil left Jesus. Let me advise, brethren, do not laugh with sin. You don't, you don't laugh with them. It says, we cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Any negative thought that comes, want to take charge of your mind, bring it into captivity. Don't let it devour you. Don't let it control you. Bring it under control. Amen? Amen. You know, last week, my husband preached on someone and reminded us of those who are blessed. If I may remind you, Psalm 1, verse 1 and 2, they say, Blessed is the man. Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly? If you remember that scripture. Who stands, who does not stand on the path of sinners? Who does not sit in the seat of the scornful? That is the man who is blessed. You're not making, you don't go walking into ungodliness. You don't go standing on the path of sinner. You don't, you don't, you don't relax and, 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 and make friends with sin and ungodliness. You don't sit in the seat of a scornful. You don't make jests of the things of God. You don't make fun of the things of God. Psalm 1 verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. That is our portion as believers. That is our portion as, 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 as Christians. Church, that is our portion this year, 2021. Amen. That we will meditate on the law of God day and night. Amen. How do we take charge of our mind? How do we take control of our mind? How do we win the battle over our mind? Number one, know and understand you are a new creation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. She is 
a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Brethren, you are a new creation in Christ. Your former way of life is gone. It's past. You are new. You're brand new in Christ. Number two, start feeding yourself. Start feeding your mind with what is good. Like the old Cherokee folk taste says, feed your mind with what is good, not with evil. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the peace of God will be with you. Amen? Amen. Get rid of those things which drew you to sin pornography, immorality, negative relationships, bad influence, greed, covetousness, lies, anger, envy, laziness, <coughs> gluttony, procrastination. jealousy, procrastination, idol worship. Get rid of them. You know, instead of watching a movie that will lead you down the path of sin or make you have nightmares in the night because you're so horrible, Decide to watch a movie that will bring you closer to God. Read a book that will lift up your spirit, that will edify you. Read the Bible. That is the greatest book on the, in the whole earth. It's, you know, I tell people it's full of stories. You love stories? Read the Bible. It's full of stories. Feed yourself with the word of God. Meditate on what he says and live in his promises and in obedience to his word. Feed your spirit i cannot say it enough feed your spirit so that you may grow you may grow as a child of god feed your spirit so that your spirit can be much more powerful than your flesh and control your mind you know i have a i have i have i have i have a, a christian sister who in those days she get, came to the church and she gave a testimony she was reading her bible meditating on the word of god and all of a sudden an evil thought dropped into her mind an immoral thought dropped into her mind and she stopped all of a sudden and said devil how dare you interrupt me when i'm reading the word of god she addressed the devil directly because she knew where that distraction was coming from how dare you distract me when i'm reading the the, the word of god she bind that, that, that distraction. And guess what? The devil never tried it again. And she said from that time on, she was able to focus on reading her Bible. You need to understand who your enemy is. Spend time with God. Pray and fast. Start the new year in God's presence. Let him lead and guide you. You cannot on your own change your life. You need God's help. In fasting, you refuse to feed the flesh and you spend time praying to God and feeding your spirit. A lot of churches right now are fasting and praying for maybe the first one week, the first two weeks, the first 21 days, the first one month. Join in. Fast and pray and spend time with God and get your spirit renewed for the new year 2021. Amen. Man. Have fellowship with other believers. COVID-19 is no excuse for not being in fellowship. Since we are still sheltering in place, have fellowship by phone or by Zoom or even watch live TV. There are a lot of podcasts and there are a lot of TV programs, Christian programs. Do not isolate yourself or you will be distracted. Something else will take over your mind. The devil looks for the lone sheep to devour. If you are alone, the devil can easily distract your mind. But when you fill your mind with the word of God, you spend time with, in fellowship, the enemy will not have the time to distract your attention. And then another thing is to testify 
to others what God has done and is doing in your life. Revelations chapter 12, verse 11 says, We overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Testify to other people what God has done in your life. As I conclude this morning, it is a new year. It is a new day. It is a new dawn. It is time for a new life with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It is time to let that thing that holds onto you like a flea to a dog go. Let it go. Let that besetting sin go. Roll off your back. Feed your spirit so you can be healthy spiritually and have a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has given us a sound mind, a healthy, Holy Ghost-filled mind. The flesh, we have no place to rule in our lives when we are filled with the Spirit of God. Let's put to death the deeds of the flesh. You know, Romans chapter 8 verse 13 says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Amen. Church, let us live this year, 2021. Amen. Tell yourself, I will live to the glory of God this year, 2021. I will live to the glory of God this year, 2021. I will live to the glory of God this year, 2021. I will live to the glory of God this year, 2021. Amen. Amen. You know, if I, I'm talking, you know, to believers, to Christians, maybe as you hear my voice, you do not quite understand everything we are saying. You have not given your life to Jesus Christ. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. The Bible says, when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Confess your sins to God and ask him to forgive you. Accept that Jesus Christ has paid for your sin. I know that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. Give your heart and your life to Jesus. Make him your Lord and Savior that you can start living from the beginning of this year on, a good life. The life that God created you to live. A life of righteousness, of peace, and of joy in the Holy Ghost. Taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. Amen. Church, it is time to put on the new man and live for God this new year. God bless you abundantly. I love you. Amen. Amen.